I wanted you to know off the top that I uh, think of you all the time. Um, and I know I've told you this before, but I think it bears repeating. Uh, you said to me once how great of a city that Brainerd, Minnesota was to bike in. This is a city that I live. It's a city that I'm, uh, you know, actively uh, involved in. I've, I've been here my entire life, except for a couple stints at uh, universities. Um, you said this was a great place to bike. And, and I, at the time, I lived way outside of the town. And my experience in the city was, you know, the last mile kind of thing. And this was an experience of, of going across the Strodes and going across the, the nasty highways and, and pressing the big button and standing there and waiting while cars go next to you at, you know, 60 miles an hour, five feet away from you is a horrible, awful experience. Um, I since have, you know, obviously moved into town. I've lived here half a dozen years and I've experienced the city as a biker. Um, and with a lot of intention. I mean, I, I bike quite a bit now. I, I bike a lot and I bike um, for practical reasons. I also bike um, for fun, you know, uh, recreation um, in both ways. This is a great biking city. Yes, there's the highway that runs through the middle of town. It's nasty. It's <laughs> terrible. Um, yes, you know, there's some places where it, 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 it really is difficult to bike. The bridge crossing the Mississippi River has it's like a four foot wide sidewalk on the side and the vehicles are going 50 miles an hour right next to you yeah. um it is really deadly but for the most part this is a great place to bike it's got a lot of it's got it's got good quiet neighborhoods connected to uh some decent trail systems and i think the thing that is maybe not um, appreciated a much is just how many destinations there are in biking distance you know when you when you walk you've got a one mile kind of easy walk window for me. I, I'm, I'm maybe a little bit healthier than the typical person, but I feel like a one, you know, if you, if you walk regularly, one mile is not a difficult walk. Right. Um, but wow, if you start biking, I mean, I can reach everything. I, yeah. I never need to get in a car, like literally never need to get in a car. Cause and I live in a city, city. of 14,000 I mean, people. It's yeah. a small town. Yeah. yeah. A small town. It's yeah. 14,000 people. Yeah. And um, you know, you, if you told my neighbors, you're going to be without your car for a month. Yeah. Most of them would say, I have no clue how I can survive. Yeah. And for me, it's like, wow, this is, yeah, I, I, I can, if I don't have to drive to the airport or drive something for my kids, right. I can go a month without starting my car. Yeah. 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 It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Um, and I think that that's a, an interesting story too, because it's the story of, smaller cities, smaller towns. And then when we look at it, it's the story of our neighborhoods. You know, it, yeah. it's, it, it's the reality that, um, we can have, you know, uh, you know, these places that we can get to, uh, but you brought it up. It's the thing that gets in the way are those strodes, <laughs> this road that you literally have cutting right through the middle of your, your city, you know, separating your neighborhood from the historic downtown and where your office used to be. It's a trauma actually. Yeah. And I've started to, um, I started to experience it as and, and, and I don't want to be, I don't want to be melodramatic. And I'm, I'm going to preface this by saying, I am not saying this to be melodramatic. Uh, I'm an engineer from Minnesota. Uh, hyperbole is, is not always, you know, it's not really my thing. Um, there's a certain amount of violence that you experience when you have to traverse across uh, what is highway 210 through the middle of the city of Brainerd. Um, it is five lanes. It is fast, high speed traffic. Um, you feel naked and exposed on the approach to it when you're crossing it and on the approach, uh, you know, the, the departure away from it. No matter how you do it, it is a, a very hostile, uh, threatening kind of experience. And yeah, I, you know, this is not unique to my city. I mean, most cities have something similar to this, particularly cities of this size. Uh, have, you know, the main highway running through the middle of town. It's our economic artery. Um, it is the place that has done like more destruction to city than anything uh, is this nasty strode. And yeah, it, it makes it, it if, if somehow that were solved, uh, it would alleviate, I think, 90 percent of the obstacles that people have to uh, to getting around by foot and by bike in, in this community. I think about the work that you do. 
Um, and, and, and to, to me, I have you, you and I start in different places, right? Like you start with this active life vision and I've started with this financial, uh, conundrum that I was trying to solve. Um, and I, I, I feel like my early days of, of not only engineering and planning, but maybe even the early days of strong towns. Um, was one that would have discounted not you as an individual, but but your work as being in a sense less important or uh, marginal to the the other conversations that were going on. Um, you know, active living is a great idea; it's a great concept. Boy, it would be nice if everybody could do that. But for many people, it's a lifestyle choice, and you know, I, I think we've got more urgent things to tend to. As time has gone on, I, I've come to recognize how wrong that that reaction was, and how central and urgent uh, the active living conversation is. Um, not only important because of public health issues and and, and because of uh, quality of life issues, um, but but deeply important to solving the problem that that I was uh, inspired by, you know, this this financial uh, insolvency issue that we see in local governments across the country. We will not solve that problem without a culture that embraces biking and walking. Uh, we will not solve that problem without streets that are safe for people who bike and walk. We will not solve any of these problems without active living uh, being not a optional thing or a marginal thing or something on the side, uh, but it being central to everything that we discuss and everything that we do, essentially incorporated into those conversations. And so as a final thought, I, I just want to acknowledge that, um, say that you know what you're doing, what we're doing is to me perfectly aligned. I love every opportunity I can to come here and, and chat with you uh, and chat with you know the people that, that you have found uh, to interact with. Um, every time I see them, Preston is a great example. Preston is a, is a Strong Towns member, as are you, John. I deeply appreciate it. You know, every, every time we have these interactions, um, I think we get closer and closer and closer to the place we need to be, which if, if I could just paint an avatar of what that is, it is the kid uh, out on a bike. It is the mom pushing her kids in a stroller with rollerblades on. It's the elderly person on the, the adult trike going to the grocery store. Um, it is the couple walking down the street, having an engaging conversation. Um, it is a culture of people who bike and walk. And, and you are, I think, one of the leading bridges, one of the leading proponents of connecting these things together. And I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful for all that you do. So thank you, John. And thank you. And uh, you and I have said this before, uh, inherently a strong town is an active town because a strong town is a town where, and a city and a community is a place where you can live a healthy, active lifestyle. You can walk and bike to meaningful destinations. You can take transit, you can do these types of things. So these, you, you, you don't have the, um, the wedge or this, or, or this, you know, uh, you know, insidious no tension. land use. Right. Yeah. The, you know, the, 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 the horizontal expansion, you know, the experiment of, of, uh, you know, of, you know, what we would call suburban sprawl, whatever we don't yeah. necessarily yeah. use that word, but, but yeah, exactly. So that's one of the first things that we, we said way back in 2013 on the first podcast was yeah, inherently. A strong town is well, an active town. I, I, I'll take it a step further. I don't think you can be a strong town without a, a, an active town. I don't think you can be a strong town without a culture of biking and walking.